COP27. There has been much comment about the belief that the United Kingdom Prime Minister Rishi Sunak would not attend COP27. It now looks as if he will attend after all. But if we look at the Paris Agreement, net zero and financial commitments made by Mr Sunak at COP26, it does seem that he does not need to attend COP27. What more can he do? We can back up that opinion if we look at the speech made by Mr Sunak at COP26 when he was Chancellor. He said, it's easy to feel daunted by the scale of the challenge that we face. But he felt optimism because this is the first COP to bring together so many of the world's finance ministers businesses and investors with such a clear common purpose. To deliver the promise made in Paris six years ago to direct the world's wealth to protect our planet. Here he is referring to the Paris Agreement and by implication the United Nations 2030 Agenda. He continued, it's why the IMF are providing a new 650 billion US dollars allocation of special drawing rights. And it's why we are going to meet the target to provide 100 billion US dollars of climate finance to developing countries. Over the next five years, we will deliver a total of 500 billion US dollars investment to the countries that need it most. And we can do more today. Mr Sunak announced that the United Kingdom will commit £100 million to the Task Force on Access to Climate Finance. He continued, The Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero has now brought together financial organisations with assets worth over £130 trillion. US dollars of capital to be deployed and confirming his commitment to net zero he stated that this is an historic wall of capital for the net zero transition around the world. He emphasized his net zero low carbon dedication by urgent action to invest that capital in our low carbon future. He goes further and states that our third action is to rewire the entire global financial system for net zero. It has been noted that this aspiration accords with the World Economic Forum desire to bring about a great reset of capitalism. Returning to Mr Sunak's speech, to enforce these aims, he said that the United Kingdom had already made it mandatory for businesses to disclose climate-related financial information and that the UK will go further and become the first ever net zero aligned financial centre. This means, he said, we are going to move towards making it mandatory for firms to publish a clear, deliverable plan set in out how they will decarbonize and transition to net zero. Rishi Sunak finishes by saying that there is a renewed pledge to 100 billion US dollars a year of public funding, over 130 trillion US dollars of private capital waiting to be deployed and a greener financial system underway. And that six years ago, Paris set the ambition. Today, in Glasgow, we are providing the investment we need to deliver that ambition. To recap, these are the key commitments made at COP26 that are relevant to Mr Sunak's attendance at COP27. There is a historic wall of capital for the net zero transitions around the world. That capital needs to be invested in a low carbon future. And 
we need to rewire the entire global financial system for net zero and deliver the Paris Agreement and United Nations 2030 Agenda. Based on his COP26 speech, it is difficult to identify what the United Kingdom Prime Minister can further achieve at COP27. There are certainly pressing issues in the United Kingdom that need his full attention and guidance. But it does seem that enormous pressure has been brought to bear, from whom it is not known. But Mr Rishi Sunak, the UK Prime Minister, has U-turned and will attend COP27. Our community combines the topics of globalism, nationalism, climate change, health and the new world order. If you would like to join our community, you can find us on locals.com slash discover. Just enter the new world order. This link will take you directly to our site.